there hasn't come an affliction, a trial, greater. From the time of Adam until the end of time, a trial more vicious, more harsher, more deceiving than the fitna of Dajjal. And the Prophet says, all prophets warn their people about him. And I am the last of the prophets. And you are the last of the nations. So he will come from you. There's no way about it. He will come amidst your time. Ad-Dajjal. Literally in Arabic, the word Ad-Dajjal means the liar, the deceiver, Ad-Dajjal, Dajjal. In every way that you can think of lies, all of its forms, Ad-Dajjal will have all these forms. And the worst, the most dangerous thing Ad-Dajjal will have is the psychological deception. Dajjal, the worst, I mean, what's so bad? I mean, we've had many wars before and Muslims have been wiped out in countries in places before, but this Dajjal, he doesn't wipe out or take over the rule or authority or power in the world really by weapons of mass destruction or you know all that stuff. He takes it over by the psychological war. And what do we live in today? What kind of wars do you think today are the strongest and most dangerous wars? It's not the wars of blood, the mass destruction. No, it is the ideological wars that we are living now. You could be living in the most peaceful country and through the internet and television, our youth, our Muslim youth are being destroyed mentally, psychologically. You look at the evil and you think it's good. And it comes to you with a smile. And our youth think it's okay. Until religion is looked at as a restriction rather than a protection. We're not going to dwell too much on that, but what I do want to let you know is that the Dajjal will not come until there are prerequisites. There are certain occurrences that are going to happen before the Dajjal comes out. And this man, a Dajjal, will come out at a time where the world is ready to accept him in his Dajjal, in his deception. He'll find followers. A Dajjal. Rasul Sallallahu called him Al-Masih Al-Dajjal. Why? The word Al-Masih, the one wiped, wiped off. Because referring to one of his eyes, it looks like it's wiped. The light has gone away from it. It's dark and he can't see with it. One eye he can't see. And it'll look like it's flat, like a grape that has its liquid sucked out of it. Dajjal has one of his eyes obliterated, like as in wiped out. It is covered. Mamsuhul Ayn. مكتوب بين عينيه كافر on his forehead is written كافر every believer can read it whether he is literate or illiterate the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم described him his hair will be curly his legs will be arched he walks a little different he's stubby strongly built he will be young in age he's not old probably in his mid-thirties. He's red-skinned, meaning he's more reddish in color when you look at him. He's not tall, he's short, but his body is very stocky, it's huge. Like when you look at him, you say, well, this is, he is a huge man, and his face looks rough. And his forehead is wide. His forehead is wide. His chest is wide wide shoulders. His right eye looks like it's been wiped off, like that grape. The right eye he can't see with, he can only see with his left. And this eye doesn't look like it's poking out, nor does it look like it's hollow. It just looks, as I said, like a dry piece of grape. His left eye has got an extra piece of meat on it. So it looks like it's got a piece of extra meat either underneath or on top of it. So Rasul Azam describing him in detail here. And one of his other descriptions is that he is impotent. He, can, he cannot have children. He cannot have children. Nor does he get married. 
These are some of his detailed descriptions which the Prophet ﷺ told us about. And subhanallah, before he comes, three years will happen like this. In the first year, Allah Rabbul Izza will order the sky to hold back a third of its rain. So a third of the water of the rain will be held back. And the second year, two thirds will be held back. And the third year, there will be no rain. So a drought and famine has already gripped mankind. And then this man comes, the Dajjal. With him, a river of fire and a river of water. And he enters into a village amidst the people. And he says, do you believe in me? I am your Lord. And when they believe, he tells the sky rain and rain comes, tells the earth produce your produce and it will produce its produce. This man, Al-Masih al-Dajjal, Rasul Azam told us, will cause fitna to all people with everything that Allah has given him of powers. He will make rain come down as he wills wherever he wants it to come and he'll deny it from the people he doesn't want to have rain. He can revive the land with crops and plantation and he can cause another land to be dead and never have crops and plantation. So no food for its people. And many other powers which Allah has given him in order to test the people as one of the final tests for mankind towards the end of the last time. He is also called al Masih, not only because of the, the eye that looks like it's been wiped off, but also the word Masih in Arabic means that the one who will spread out through the world. He will go everywhere in the world. He will reach every place in the world and occupy it except for two places, Mecca and Medina. al Masih calls it, al Masih al-Dajjal calls it Thiba. Thiba means Medina and Mecca. He will not be able to set foot, he will not be able to go into it. But he will reach its borders and he'll try to deceive the people who are in there. He will go to a dead person, tell a person, a Bedouin, if I bring your parents back to life, would you believe that I am your Lord? He will say, yes, he says, rise. And two shayateen will come in the image of his parents and will say, son, listen to him, he's your Lord. Do you see Iman is shaken to its core? How do you not believe your eyes? He'll say that I am God. Ana ilahukum. And then they'll say, what proof do you have? He said, only God can raise the dead. He said, okay, what if I raise your parents from the dead? They said, yes, we'll believe your God. So he will be able to get the jinns, the shayateen to work for him and they will speak to them. And so the people, non-Muslim people and the weak Muslims will follow him. He will tell the earth, spit out your treasures. The hadith says, like, be, like bees, gold and silver and diamonds will come out of the ground and follow him. Al Rasul Sallallahu kept on speaking about a Dajjal that day. The companions said we feared because he told us that it was, his time was so near, so close that we started to feel as if he's just behind the trees somewhere. And his time is coming very close. A Dajjal will live for 40 days, as we said. In the first day, it'll be as long as a year, the second day, as long as a month, the third day, as long as a week, and the rest of the day is normal. And there will be one man who, who, who will do something. Our Rasul Sallallahu says, I know him and he is the best man in, on that day. He will come warning the people saying he is not God. He is not God. He is a Dajjal. He is the Antichrist. And they will say, what are you saying about our Lord? So they'll bring him to him. And he will say, I am your God. Look what I can do. He said, you are the liar. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us about you. So he'll bring a saw and he'll saw him in half. And then he'll walk between the two body parts and the man will come and rise. He'll become alive again. And the Prophet ﷺ told us he will be able to do that once, just once. And the man said, the Dajjal says to him, now do you believe I am God? And he says, now I believe more that you are not God, but you are actually a Dajjal, because you cannot do this to me again. And truly, he will not be able to do that again. He will throw him into his fire. And Rasul ﷺ tells us he will have something that looks like a fire and something that looks like water. He said, it's an illusion. The fire is his water and his water is his fire. Go to the fire to drink from it if you see it. And the man vanishes, disappears. Rasul Sallallahu says, he is the best, he's a real man, the best of men in that day who tries to call the people away from the worship of a Dajjal. 
After the 40 days have ended, the Muslims will be praying behind the Mahdi, almost about to pray Salat al Dhuhr. Also in the Hadith in Sahih Muslim, you will find it. They'll be praying in Asham in Syria, in Syria in particular, in Damascus, in Damascus, in a mosque called Masjid al Minar al Bayda. Rasulullah named it the one with the white minaret. They call it that name now in Damascus. It's got many white minarets and it, it really shines and lights up very well. At this point, when they are inside this encampment, Allah Rabbul Izza sends them their solution. Isa, the son of Mary, will descend. How will he descend, Ya Rasul? His hand will be on the wings of two angels. He will be covered in two garbs, both tinged slightly yellow. There, there will be a small a group of army praying with Al-Mahdi in that masjid. As they were about to play, suddenly Isa alayhi salam descends, the real Isa alayhi salam. And the two angels will be carrying him on each side, he'll be wearing two garments, and his beard will be long, it will be black, and his hair will be long and black. It will be not curly and not dead straight, and it will, it will reach his shoulders as if it is dropping with water, as if water is seeping up. That's, that's his look, alayhi salatu wasalam. And his cheeks will be red, red, red cheeks, and he's white in color. So he is a Isa alayhi salam, very handsome man. Will come down and he will enter, bayt, uh, he will enter this masjid. And the Muslims will notice him. And Al Mahdi will walk back so that Isa alayhi salam can pray Imam. And he will say, Every nation has its own Imam which Allah has appointed and you are the appointed Imam of this nation. So remain in your position. So Isa comes down for a different purpose and he prays behind Al-Mahdi. That's how important Al-Mahdi is. Isa prays behind him. After that in the hadith it says he wipes the face of the Muslims that are in there and he informs them of their places in Jannah, what they have. They go off to Al-Maqdis to fight the army of the Dajjal. And in Al-Maqdis in Jerusalem, the, the Dajjal would have come with an army with him. He will not know that Isa alayhi salam is with Al-Mahdi and the Muslim army. And they'll enter, they'll, they'll find them on the borders of the Temple of Solomon, as you call it. You know, that's that temple where Maqdis is. That's, that's where Sulaiman alayhi salam had his kingdom built. They will exit and find a Dajjal with his army. A Dajjal, as soon as he sees Isa alayhi salam, he runs away. Rasul sallallahu alayhi salam said, he runs away and he begins to melt. Literally melt. The Dajjal sees Isa alayhi salam. The false Messiah sees the real Messiah. And he runs and Isa alayhi salam chases him. And calling he says, it is written that I owe you one strike. Before Isa alayhi salam lets him melt, Isa alayhi salam follows him with a sword and kills him. So he bleeds and he dies. And he says to the people, if he was a god, how can I kill him? See, if he melted and gone and dissolved, they'll think he's a god. But he killed him and he says to prove to the people he is not a god. Allahu A'lam, if whether there is any repentance at that time, people can embrace Islam or not. The news is conflicting. We don't know if the sun has risen yet at that time, because the Rasul said, when the sun rises from the west, no more repentance will be accepted, or whether there is still time for repentance. If there is time for repentance, only a small amount of people will be there to repent. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Isa alayhi salam will live. Allahu alam for how long? Some narrations say 10 years, others say 40 years. But what I do know is that the narrations tell us that he will outlive Al Mahdi alayhi salam. Al Mahdi will live for 10 years and he will fill it with justice, as I said before. And Isa alayhi salam will die later on. So Isa alayhi salam will really die finally. At the moment, we believe Isa alayhi salam was risen. And he's alive and he'll be returned. They did not kill him, nor did they crucify him, but Allah lifted him to him. In a way we don't understand. Now, whether it's at this time or before this time or close to that time, we don't know. The point is, when the, when the first major sign appears, the other major signs come after each other. Meaning there's not much space between them at all. And we're not talking about years, we're talking about just maybe a few days or probably even in the same day, probably a few weeks. They come after each other very quickly. Signs after signs after signs. Keep in mind, minor signs are still going. 
more minor signs are happening. But the major signs come after each other. Rasulullah described it like a bead. When you break that string and the beads come out one after the other. So none of them come at the same time together, but they come after each other, but closely after each other, the major signs. It's like the end of the world is running out quickly. The world is coming to its end. It's dying. Like a person on his deathbed. Sickness after sickness after sickness. And if you realize now what's going to be actually be happening is that Al-Mahdi dies. Isa alayhi salam dies. Then during that time or shortly after, the sun rises from where it sets. Rasul sallallahu says, Tawbah, repentance, returning back to Allah, renewing your faith with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, will always be accepted. Unless two things happen, one of two things. Until the soul reaches the gargling point when you die. Repentance is accepted until the soul reaches the gargling. You go like this. And when the sun rises from where it sets, that's the end of time. But no more repentance, no more conversion to Islam. Khalas. The way you are is the way you are. Kafir, kafir, Muslim, Muslim. Uh, one who didn't pray, one who didn't pray. One ask, khalas. the way you are is the way you are. The sun will rise like this. Scientific theories at the moment tell us that the universe is changing and the galaxies are changing. And I don't know if you know much about the expansion of the universe. This was a, a fact discovered at the time of Albert Einstein and now it's a fact scientific fact that the universe has been expanding for billions of years this is true and the Quran sort of hints to it some scholars interpret we, we built the sky and the sky is expanding the point is they say it's going to reach a point where it will stop and then there will be something what they call a big crunch or another universe is going to be formed this is what they say non-Muslim scientists say. Nevertheless, what we do know as the Prophet ﷺ told us, the world will change and the universe will crunch and everything will be reversed. So the sun, the direction of the sun that we see will be the opposite way. This also shows that everything in the solar system will be the opposite way. And so the world will reverse and the crunches will happen. For when that sun rises, there is no more repentance. And closely after that, more and more faith is taken away from the world till finally the Qur'an is taken, until the Kaaba is even destroyed and there wouldn't be one single Muslim muwahid on the face of the earth left. But there are a few more signs before that happens.